<sighs> there is a pretty big chance that when you saw me yawning, you started yawning as well. And this brings up two pretty good questions. The first one being, why do we yawn in the first place? Because there are a lot of theories out there that are incorrect. And two, why is yawning contagious? That's what I'm going to explain in this video. If you're new to the channel, hi there, my name is Willem and I'm your favorite source of mediocre entertainment and psychology videos. If you liked this video, if you thought it was fun or educative, please leave a like, share it with your mom, it really helps me to grow my channel and to keep me motivated to make more content. If you have feedback, positive or negative, leave it in the comments and of course wash your hands because I wouldn't want you to get corona. And don't forget to subscribe. That being said, welcome to Brains Applied. Let's start this video by explaining why people yawn. Do you know why? If you're like some people, you might think that we yawn to get more oxygen into our brain. But this hypothesis has already been busted more than 30 years ago. It's not true at all. Other people might think that it's a sign of being sleepy, because we especially yawn more in the evening and sometimes during the morning as well. But this has also been proven to be wrong. Feeling sleepy does not per se make you yawn more. And yawning isn't in any way correlated to the amount of sleep that you had last night. Another idea is that we sometimes also yawn when we are bored. This might be true, but people sometimes do yawn when they are stressed as well. Paratroopers, for example, even have been noticed to be yawning before they jump out of an airplane. I don't know if you've ever jumped out of an airplane, but I know that I haven't because I would shit my pants. And I don't think you can ever get used to skydiving to the extent where it becomes boring, right? So that wouldn't make sense. As a matter of fact, we aren't exactly sure yet why we yawn. The only hypothesis that does have a lot of evidence in its favor is the idea that we yawn to cool down our brain. Our brain has an optimal temperature at which it can work the best. But when our brain gets too hot, we yawn which cools our brain a tiny bit, making us feel fresher and more vigilant. When we yawn, we constrict and relax our facial muscles and this increases our blood flow towards our face and our brain. As our blood is consistently 0.2 degrees colder than our brain, it's a pretty good coolant. Our body is also able to cool down this blood through heat exchange with the air. Because the artery which pumps blood straight into our brain, the internal carotid artery, is located at the back of our mouth and nose cavity. Yawning is thus an ideal way to cool our blood before it enters our brain. And studies have also shown that when your environmental temperature rises, we tend to yawn more because our brain temperature increases as well. That is, until the temperature of our environment becomes warmer than the temperature of the human body. And if you're wondering, why would that make me yawn more in the evening? There is an explanation for that as well. It's related to your circadian rhythm. A circadian rhythm is a natural internal process that regulates the sleep-wake cycle and repeats roughly every 24 hours. It can refer to any biological process that displays an endogenous and trainable oscillation of about 24 hours. These 24-hour rhythms are driven by a circadian clock and they have been widely observed in plants, animals, fungi and cyanobacteria. That's enough scientific language for one video. Throughout such a cycle, your body and brain temperatures change. And yawning especially occurs when our brain temperature is at its peak. During the evening. But it also happens when we wake up and our brain temperature suddenly increases a lot. During the morning. The question of course remains, 
why is it contagious? The most reasonable explanation would be an evolutionary one. Because when one person in a group starts yawning, other people start yawning as well. And this keeps everyone's mind fresh. And in a survival situation, for example for animals or prehistoric people, this can be quite useful to keep everyone awake and vigilant. And some animals, like chimps, do indeed suffer from contagious yawning as well. Studies have also shown that the extent to which yawning is contagious depends on the environmental temperature. And we also do know that we are more likely to yawn when people that we are more familiar with do so, in comparison to people that we are not familiar with. This suggests that the unconscious process of contagious yawning might be explained through empathy. However, this is really hard to study since empathy is such a complex and weird thing to measure. And the existing studies regarding this subject do, in fact, show opposing results. On top of that, they have been designed in such different ways that it becomes hard to compare them. So, more research is needed on this subject. Another existing theory is that contagious yawning happens because of our mirror neurons. Mirror neurons are a network of neurons that fire when you observe someone performing an action or when you perform this action yourself. These neurons are supposedly what makes us able to imitate other people and what makes us able to learn skills such as speaking. Contagious yawning would thus be some kind of beneficial coincidental side effect of these neurons. But again, studies on this topic show contradictory results, so we don't know exactly what makes yawning contagious. Just remember that yawning is a way for your brain to cool down and to freshen your mind. And that my friends is all I wanted to tell you today. I hope you liked this video, if you did, Press the like button and of course, don't forget to smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you receive a 100% free notification next time when I upload a new video. And I will see you guys later.